What up, y'all? It's your boy Dawson from D&D TV. Thank you all for rating, commenting, and subscribing. Everybody who's donated, I appreciate it. To the churches who've been donating to me, y'all don't know how good that makes me feel because this show is for humanity, not just for church people, but I appreciate the pastors who've donated as well. Also, thank you all for subscribing to my other YouTube channel, Dawson Speak. I am humbled by all of the people who have subscribed to me. I am a YouTuber who does not make videos every day, nor do I make videos every week. And you all still see uh, the need. And I mean, y'all y'all just come and subscribe. And it really, it humbles me because it lets me know that the stuff I put out is not just garbage. That it's stuff that you can go back and listen to. And that people really are, they, they really appreciate it because I get y'all emails and I get y'all texts and the DMs on Facebook and all that stuff. So I'm grateful that I could do something that really helps a lot of people. And to the people who don't like it but come over here and thumbs down anyway, I appreciate you too. Because you too understands that when somebody speaks truth, whether you like it or not, you got to acknowledge it. So I appreciate you for even watching. Let me get into this topic. Now, speaking of helping people, let me pull on up here to Memphis, Tennessee and help Mother Cleavy Williams. Now, y'all know if it's anything that really gets Dawson is when people take advantage or manipulate or abuse or molest or hurt children, people with mental illness, people who have developmental disabilities and also the elderly. That is when y'all just get ghetto Dawson, that Florida ratchet Dawson. That is when he comes out because I will not let you sit and know that there's a story where you are manipulating the children. You're abusing the children. You're raping the children and you're doing the same thing, scamming the elderly. And I sit back and just watch that. At that point, you no longer are a pastor. You become a predator. And for predators, we got something for that ass. Now, look here. A Memphis pastor and his wife are being accused of taking advantage of a 77-year-old woman in their church, racking up nearly $50,000 on her credit card. Pastor Frederick Smith, 49 years old, was arrested in connection with the alleged scam that he and his wife committed against the 77-year-old woman, Cleavy Williams. First Lady Jerry Smith was arrested Thursday morning and a warrant shows that First Lady Jerry was arrested on the same charges as her husband, Pastor Smith. Now, Cleavy Williams, the 77 year old elderly woman, said that she was a part of the New Life Holiness Church. Holy, y'all, they holy. She was only a part of the New Life Holiness Church for a few months when the pastor of that church, Pastor Frederick Smith, asked her if she would be a part of the Mother's Board. And she said she thought it was an honor, and so she said yes. But she said shortly after she joined the Mother's Board that the pastor, along with his wife, stole her identity and opened up credit cards in her name that he used my god now i'm gonna go ahead and get into this uh this whole story in a little bit i'm gonna let y'all watch these videos but i want y'all to look at the pastor the pastor and his lovely bride or beard depending on who you talking to in memphis and i'll get to that at the end of my video the pastor and his lovely bride have been doing this for quite some time. This is not their first time at the rodeo and it's not their first time being introduced to scandal within Memphis and now this has gone abroad. Watch these videos and I'll be back with the rest of my commentary. A Memphis pastor is under arrest and a warrant is out for his wife. Yeah, they're both accused of taking advantage of a 77 year old woman in their church congregation and racking up tens of thousands of dollars on her credit card. That family called Fox 13 Investigates Hotline when they claimed the pastor broke his promise to pay off that credit card debt. Fox 13's Greg Coy has been digging into this story for two weeks now. Greg, the victim told you this crime has left her shaken. Phoebe Williams was only a member of the New Life Holiness Church for a few months. This woman is steeped in her Pentecostal faith, and so she took it as an honor. When the pastor, at that time, Frederick Smith, asked her to be on the motherboard, a decision that she says ruined her credit and left her with $20,000 in credit card bills that she insists is not her own. And Williams blames it on Frederick G. Smith, the former pastor. Smith, Greg Coy, can we talk to you? Pastor Frederick Smith drove away when I went to his home to ask him about allegations by a former member. I don't want to see him. No part of it. 
because he's a dishonest pastor. Cleve Williams claims Smith stole her identity, opened up credit cards in her name that he used. Williams claims Smith failed on his promise to pay off the nearly $20,000 in charges that Williams says Smith made without her consent. I was just almost speechless. I couldn't think of anything to do. I said, what is this? I've never in a lifetime had a card or anything from Bank of America. Never. Did you ever open up a Bank of America card? No, sir. Sign it? No, sir. I've never been inside one of the banks. The Williams family gave me the last statement from Bank of America dated April 2015. The amount due is more than $19,000. I counted nearly $9,000 in charges he made in a week and a half. What happened? The credit card companies, what did they do? Did they start to call you? Did they say, pay us the money? No, they sent me mail. They started mailing to my address to be paid. How nervous were you? I just could not function. I was hurt. I would more or less say I was angry. And I just didn't know what else to do. Did you ever look at, at, at Pastor Smith and say, frankly, I know you did this to me. No, I went straight to the authorities. Williams filed this police report in May of 2015, identified Pastor Smith as a suspect, but later declined to press charges after he agreed to pay the Bank of America bills the next month. Williams says Smith never did. No, not all of it. They paid down and quit. They paid some and quit. Last Friday, I spoke to Pastor Smith on the phone. He told me three times that he never stole Williams' personal information to open a credit card. He told me Williams opened the Bank of America credit card and gave him permission to use it for church expenses. I asked Pastor Smith, why use a credit card of a 77-year-old woman? Smith told me it was a poor choice. Can you pay that off? Oh, no, I don't. Sir, I am a senior. And I own um, tenure income once a month. No way. Pastor Frederick G. Smith is still the pastor of New Life Holiness Church. He was released on bond as a court hearing tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Reporting live outside of Grenada, Mississippi, I'm Greg Coy, Fox 13 News. Keep a church member, Frederick Smith and his wife, lead New Life Holiness Church, also called the Life Center Church. They're facing identity theft and forgery charges. Local 24 News reporter Mary Jo Ola is live from outside the church that's in Hickory Hill. Mary Jo, what can you tell us? Well, Katina, Frederick Smith and his wife, Jerry, are out on bond tonight after an eight-year-old woman said the pastor racked up tens of thousands of dollars in credit card debt, all under her name. This Facebook Live video appears to show Pastor Frederick Smith and his wife Jerry praising God hours after they posted Bond Thursday. The couple leads New Life Holiness Church in Hickory Hill. They're also charged with identity theft, theft of property, and forgery. Memphis police and court records show an 80-year-old woman told investigators the crimes started in 2015 when Pastor Smith asked her to be on the mother's board he was starting. He said he needed her social security card, driver's license, and MLGW bill to be a member. She started getting credit card statements and he admitted to using her information. At the time, Smith told police the credit cards were opened with the victim's permission and that he signed a deal with her to pay the debt. The victim denied then and now ever giving Smith permission to open credit cards in her name. This October, the victim went to police with her credit report showing several accounts totaling more than $51,000 in credit card debt, and the addresses were changed to Smith's home and church. We're sorry, you have reached a number that has been disconnected. We tried calling Smith and stopped by his two church locations and home for comment, but no answer. Now, the victim also told investigators that Jerry Smith pleaded with her to not press charges and that she confessed to being with the pastor when he tried to get a loan. Now, Jerry Smith is expected to be in court tomorrow morning. The pastor has a court date in November. Reporting live in Hickory Hill, Mary Joola, Local 24 News. 
All right, y'all, let's go in. Now, first of all, before we go in, let me say this to the news reporter, Mary Jo Ola. Cleavy Williams is 77 years old. Please let her enjoy her 70s. Uh, she's not 80 just yet. She got two more years. So let her enjoy all of her 70s. And hopefully when she gets to 80 years old, Lord's, Lord's will, that, you know, you know, this whole scam that the pastor and his wife did on her will be rectified and they'll pay her back those $50,000. Now, let me say this. You all heard in the news clippings where the news reporters say that the church asked, the pastor rather, asked Cleavy Williams for personal information when she joined the church. Let me say this to all of my listeners. If you are joining a church or if your church wants to your W-2 and all this important information and wants you to give this up, how much you make and all this stuff so they can see how much you should be giving to the church, that's not the right church for you to attend. Now, I have heard people say stuff like that, like, oh, this church wants to see your W-2. They want to know how much you make. Uh, look, that is none of their business. Now, I know there are churches who go back and forth on tithe and offering. Some people believe, you know, or say, hey, it was the Old Testament. We don't have to do that. Some people pull it into the forefront and say, yes, you're supposed to tithe. People go back and forth with all of that. But let me tell you this. I am not going to be a part of nobody's church where they sitting there telling me that my life ain't going to work. I'm going to die. I'm going to have a broke limb. I ain't going to prosper if I don't get them money. And then they put the offering plate around 25 times. Dawson, do you have a problem with giving? No, I don't have a problem with giving. And when I did go to church, I gave. I and one of the reasons I gave is because I was a part of churches that were doing things in the community. I was a part of a church that did stuff with the young people in the community that helped the homeless, that had an HIV ministry, that went out and helped women of domestic violence. I saw where the ministries were in the church that helped the community. So when I see that and I'm a part of an organization, I didn't mind giving. Also, in some of the churches I went to, some of the pastors were so skilled in the word of God. God, and then they were knowledgeable about other topics. And when they would, you know, deliver the message to me, it was so it had so much truth in it. And it was almost like a life giving word that it made it made me it prompted me, man, I'm gonna bless my pastor. That was that really helped me because what you're saying is really helping me. Now, I didn't feel obligated to do it. I did it because I understand that, you know, to me, when somebody drop something powerful in your life to me it's like i appreciate that but here i want to help I'm, I'm on with this is for you because you don't know what this has done for me and to me money was just it, it was just like here pastor thank you that was it i wasn't trying to get no position or nothing like that and many of the ministers that i was able to sit up under i still remember specific sermons specific sermons y'all that can really that have really helped me and pushed me along in my life and i haven't been to church in years but the thing is, I sat under some great leaders and I'm, I'm proud of that because a lot of what they have taught me has helped me in my life and continues to help me in my life. So that is one of the reasons why I gave. Now, let me also say this. I also think that they're now in churches. Pastors are everybody is so emotional. Everybody just want to shout. They want to go through the motions. It's just tradition. There's nothing really. They're not giving people God. They're giving people performance. They're not giving people hope. It's just almost like a junkie to keep you coming back next Sunday. And oh, we going through and oh, this. And so when you're not giving people a reason to live, all you're doing is tell them God going to take care of it. And everybody depressed and down and out. No wonder your church is depleted. No wonder people don't feel like giving. Because you're not getting them excited about life. If anybody is supposed to be excited about life, it's supposed to be the, the so-called believers. Now, it trips me out when I look and see all these people throughout social media who don't have God nowhere on their mind. And they are around here doing any and everything and they're more excited than you. And you tell everybody you got a triple dose of the Holy Ghost. Now, that is just ridiculous. Now, according to Pastor Frederick Smith, he's told the news reporters that Cleavy Williams gave him the credit card and said, Pastor, here's the credit card. You can use this for the church. Whatever the church needs, you could use it. And that's why the news reporter asked him, Pastor, do you think it was wise for you to take a 77 year old woman's credit card? And he said, no, it was a bad decision. You're absolutely right, Pastor Smith. It was a bad decision for you to take uh, not only a 77 
seven year old woman's credit card, but anybody's credit card. That was a poor choice. That was a poor choice. Now, before she went to the news outlets, Mother Cleavy Williams years ago went to the police and they tried to rectify this through, you know, going through court or whatnot or tried to mediate the situation. And the pastor and his wife, First Lady Jerry, stated that they would pay down the balance and then they they paid down the balance. But then they just left the matter unresolved and the bills started to rack up more and more and more. And that's why Cleavy Williams is like, y'all are not gonna do anything about this. I'm gonna tell everybody what's going on. Because even though they're not paying it, the bills are still in her name and the statements are still coming to her home. Now, I looked at Pastor Frederick Smith's church. He has a, a good sized church there. And he has, he has a, quite a bit of people who, who attend his church, the Holiness Church. There is no way, Pastor, that you and First Lady could not have been giving her at least, in my opinion, at least five hundred to a thousand dollars a month. That that's just me. I know y'all have expenses, the churches and all that kind of stuff. But the thing is, you took this loan out in this elderly woman's name. And what, what I think happened is that you didn't think that it would get out like this. You thought that, OK, if we just, you know, pay it down a little bit and keep her, you know, uh, just hush her up for a little bit, we'll be able to keep going. But now, as you can see, this story is going all around because people are tired of pastors and people in leadership position, even politicians, people who abuse their power. This is the wrong time, I'm telling y'all, to abuse your power. This is the wrong time to be saying you're one way, but you're living another way. People have social media now. They will put you on blast. And for those of you all who are chasing fame in the church, you're chasing positions, not because you're there to serve and it's about the people and about humanity. For most of you, it's about your ego. It's about a check. People have told you how much money you can make and what trips you can go on and how, yeah, you can go get married to this lady and you can have a house here in Memphis and you can have a family life here in Memphis. But every time when you want to go tip out over in Atlanta or down in Miami or over in New York or over in California, whenever you get a chance over in Seattle, you can do that, too, because they, the church is going to pay you to go from church to church to do it, to do evangelism work. Oh, I know how the game go. Some of these people got holes in different area codes and got a whole wife at home, a hoe, a woman and a man, or sometimes group orgies. And then your wife or your husband sitting up there in the clinic looking at the nurse and the doctor, stupid, talking about something, I don't have that, I don't know how I got it. Yeah, the doctors know how you got it. Y'all better stop playing with people. This pursuit for fame. Y'all don't have no heart for the people. And y'all sit back and want to send everybody to hell. You'll probably be the first one to go. No heart for the people. You chasing celebrities. And they drunk, busted, and suicidal, and doing any and everything just to feel alive. Chasing popularity. People are pathetic. That's why all this stuff that y'all say, the devil got this world, Jesus coming back. No, he ain't. You're going to come up. You're going to come up in your mind. You're going to come up in your mentality. You're going to come up in your lifestyle and you're going to be the salt of the earth and bring flavor in the earth. You ain't got no, you ain't got nothing. You ain't working with nothing. That's why you can't affect nothing in your city. That's why you can't move nothing on your social media platform. You ain't saying nothing. If there's supposed to be a difference from the people in the world, and they're so you supposed to say something that's prophetic, something that opens up doors for people, not only in your city, you prophetess, you're supposed to speak something that if people in Bangladesh, if people in Singapore are going through traumatic experiences in their life or have gone through them, you're supposed to speak a word that begins to rectify the issues in people's mind, therefore changing their lives. That's what it does. It gets in your mind, saturated in your mind. And then it'll show up in your life. All of this stuff people talking about, but people still jumping off buildings and going committing murder, suicide. All of this stuff, people chasing fame and nobody don't care about the people. I don't care about the people. 
And then when we have all these mass shootings and murder suicide, y'all want to say the devil is busy. Why is the devil more busy than the saints? Huh? I'm not talking about no celebrities over here. I'm going to make you think. I'm the dude on YouTube who goes deep. We don't sip tea over here and we don't spill it. We eat truth. That's the problem with y'all now. All this sugar y'all taking, you got too much sugar in your tank. Eat truth. Let's sip some tea. Let's sip some tea. You hyped all up over nothing. Now, y'all know how I get when I get going on my little thing here. Now, I did say that, you know, we need to come up. And then I made a statement there. I say Jesus ain't coming back. Now, Jesus going to come back when Jesus want to come back. Let me correct myself on that. But what is going to happen is that we should be doing what we were called on this earth to do until that time comes. You can't sit back. And think about all of the horrible things that are going on in the world. And as I stated before earlier, some of you all, oh, well, I got the spirit. God is my Jesus is my homeboy. He's this for me. Then why can't that be used to be ministry in the earth to help humanity? That's what you here for. It ain't so you can get to preach at the woman die, loose conference of manpower. It's not so you can get to Joel Osteen church. So you can be a guest speaker or get to the Kojic convention or you can meet some celebrity and hopefully get you a show on own. Are you are you silly? Y'all are trying to go through traditional means to get something that God can give you the power to do for yourself. Some of y'all are too. You're chasing too much fame. I see it on YouTube. I see it. I, 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 Run for it. Run. Go get it. You're chasing fame. You chasing fame. And for some of y'all, that's going to be the death of you. You don't have nothing to say to the people. You're so narcissistic. And let me stay right here for a minute since I'm talking about people who are on social media doing this. If you're going to take uh, death if you're going to take people's funerals, if you're going to take horrible things that have happened in people's life, at least don't don't play with the situation if you're going to talk about it. If you're talking about somebody who's committed murder, who's committed suicide or who has died of murder, suicide or somebody who got shot, at least if you're going to talk about the topic, do do the people a favor, do the family a favor, because they do have family that watch this stuff. At least come with the word that is not going to be salt on their wounds. At least come with something that you can soothe the pain and also use it as a teaching tool for other people who watch your platform. Could you do that for us? Because I, cause I, I have to even put my own self out there. I had to watch how I started doing my own reviews on certain things like that. Because these people become humanized when their children and their loved ones hit you up. And say, you did a story on my daddy. You did a story on my mama. You, and they're in your comment section. It makes you see when you see when you have a heart for the people, it makes you change the way you do your whole reporting. You just don't do things for clicks and views and AdSense dollars. You don't do it for that. Because the blood going to be on your hand. Don't think you're getting away with it. Who you talking to? Whoever you think I'm talking to. And if you think I'm talking to you, then it's for you. I'm the Dawson on these streets. <laughs> I don't have the name drop to make my platform pop. I don't have to talk about no big YouTubers. Or I ain't got to do all that. All you got to do is speak truth. Impart truth in people's life. Let people know their life ain't a mistake. Oh, yeah. It's not rocket science, y'all. A person came to me. And they have an organization. And I was seeing how they were moving about their organization. And I had a chance to talk to this person. And I told the person, I said, when I first started Dawson and Denise, everything was about popularity and getting YouTube subscribers and being big and all this kind of stuff. But when I changed the trajectory of my show, my mind had changed before then about what I wanted to use my platform for. I stopped caring about fame. I stopped caring about celebrities. I stopped caring about award shows and everything that's going on because I began to understand that those people don't live where we live at. They over in Beverly Hills. They're in Scarsdale. They're in these rich, affluent areas in Aventure. They not in your community. 
and the stuff that's happening in your community. Nobody's talking to those people. The whole thing is an illusion of inclusion to make you feel that if you get where the celebrities are or where the people you think are, that if you get there, you're going to be OK. But here's a news flash: Some of them people ain't OK. Yeah, they got money. Yeah, they got big houses. Not all of them, but some of them, they'll trade to be where you are at any minute because having a bunch of money. Having all the houses and all the property in the world don't mean anything when you got demons tormenting your mind. It don't mean anything when you sick in your body. There are people who would give their oh y'all don't understand. Y'all have y'all ever been to hospice? Have you ever seen people who the doctor done told them they don't have but six months to live? They don't have but three months to live. They would give anything. They give all their degrees back just to live. And some of us take for granted because you're not in Beverly Hills yet. Because you you're not on this platform. Because Oprah Winfrey don't know your name. When you know who you are, it don't matter if Oprah don't never know your name. You better know your name. I know this too much for some of y'all. But somebody got to look beyond all this madness and speak truth. Now, in the beginning of the show, I referred to Pastor Frederick Smith's wife, Jerry, as a beard, depending on who you ask in Memphis, Tennessee. And I do stand by that statement because that stuff is already online and y'all can go do y'all own research. But since I said all the stuff I just said, I'm not even going to go into that. Thank you all for listening. Go off in the comments. Let me know what you think. Until next time, take care of yourself and each other. Peace.